Olympic City and the home of Pikes Peak. This is the Automotive ADHD Show with Matt West. And here we are rocking it on the Automotive ADHD Show, heard around the world as a podcast in Southern Colorado on AM 1460 and FM 101.1. The answer, Matt West here joining you from SEMA. And I have sitting across the table with me right now, Wesley Kagan, YouTuber, engineering entrepreneur. What, what, Wesley, what is your title? I, engineering entrepreneur, sounds pretty good, even though I apparently cannot pronounce entrepreneur. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate the, uh, First class tickets here to Vegas on a on a, an airplane in the penthouse in the Bellagio, which is of course how you treat all your guests. Yeah, you and know the Patreon guaran- dollars are, are really well spent That's here. A guarantee really anytime well. you appear as a guest. Yeah, one hundred percent. Oh boy, oh boy, I'm actually gonna have to get other guests that now. That's I, I don't yeah. know if I can afford that. I don't, yeah, yeah. Don't trust this guy. But we we are rocking it here from the SEMA show, uh, rocking it live, I should say, from the Vegas Strip for a very special edition of the Automotive ADHD show. We're going to be talking to some special guests outside of Wesley Kagan. Um, and these these special guests, clarifying that they are special, I hope to have Amir Bentatu on, the host of Motor Trend's Super Street Garage, as well as an accomplished race engineer, time attack driver. And I'm also uh, going to talk to Christina Spaulding from Chemours, the inventor of Freon. We are going to talk about Freon and why you should care about it, especially if you've got a project car. Uh, but, but before that, uh, Wesley, you were you were saying uh, yesterday that it was chilly here in Las Vegas. Is that yeah. right? Well, uh, those of us from the desert, um, it uh, as as soon as it hits seventy degrees, we got to put on coats, we got to put on jackets, and uh, I carried around a jacket entirety of yesterday. And I don't <laughs> you think convinced it, me to as well. I and convinced you I didn't to even as need, well. I didn't. I didn't wear the jacket. And, and what temperature was it when you left Colorado? It was about fourteen degrees. Yeah. Yep. And so, there was snow on the ground. It was it was lovely in the the sort of way that you don't want to go outside because you'll probably die. Maybe I should not per- per- pursue a career in media or media meteorology. <laughs> this is why you're an engineer. This is why you're this an engineer. This is why an engineer. This there is why. Go. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we've been walking around staying uh, warm, uh, even though it's about 70 degrees outside here in Vegas. Yeah. Uh, we've been staying warm here in the uh, Las Vegas Convention Center for SEMA. Yesterday, we spent some time wandering around um, the convention center, just kind of getting a feel for things. We yeah. went through the sort of manufacturers area where they have different shop tools, different cool things that I wish I could afford, but I don't have a need for, but I still want to buy anyway. Yeah. What, what did you see that caught your eye there? Well, this is my first time here, and I think it's yours as well. It is, and, yeah. Yep, um, it is. It's really, really interesting that uh, I don't actually know what I expected, but it's a lot more of a trade show um, than I anticipated you know i get uh, i see a lot of media that comes out of sema every year and it's a project cars it's the cars that people built it's mm-hmm. everything like that it's big lifted trucks with shiny paint jobs and not so good welds and um when i i was pleasantly surprised to see that it's a lot of vendors it's a lot of people that are into industry that kind of support the custom scene and a lot of people in the industry that support the not so custom scene the people who actually just own regular automotive shops, which is really, it's really good to see that like there's a big presence of that here. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the things that, you know, yeah, we see that in the media. We see a lot of the project cars. We yep. spent, what, probably a couple hours just walking around yep. the the vendor hall area. We didn't even really see any project cars. There's... We were looking at cool tools, alignment racks, uh, Harbor Freight, by the way, um, <laughs> who's not a sponsor of this show, but should be a sponsor of this show. They had a so. massive booth and they had 24 karat gold icon ratchets. Yeah, which is exactly what I need in my in my toolbox. I think that would be just perfect. Well, no, there's like an entire football field worth of uh, tires here. If you want to know everything about tires, there's plenty of information here regarding tires and tires that I've never even heard of before. Which is, um, yeah, no, it's it's great to see. A- absolutely. And uh, so th- it's a really cool presence out here. Really cool stuff. Everything from the automotive uh, mm-hmm. enthusiast to the automotive business owner. And I was kind of surprised to see that, too. Now, obviously, yeah. with automotive business owners, uh, that's a lot of what SEMA does. And mm-hmm. SEMA, uh, specifically, a lot of people just know it for the show. But SEMA is a huge organization that does 
advocate for automotive business owners. They advocate politically. They they provide resources. They do a lot of stuff. I talked about last week on the show how they're advocating for the Cars Act, which uh, protects consumer rights to purchase vehicles, be them electric, be it gas, be it hybrid, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, so SEMA does some really cool stuff. And every year they put on this show, which, again, is what people see, you know, especially if you're just browsing through social media, you're going to see a lot of the builds that are here. <laughs> now, we checked out very briefly the automotive side of the show. Yeah. And well, the the show car side, I should say. It's, it's all side. automotive, yeah. right? It's, all, it's not like they're yeah. selling boats here. It's yeah, it's but cars I mean, usually. I, I, got, I got what you were saying. <laughs> yeah. And we, we checked that out for just a, a brief moment. And we need to go back through there. We're going to spend mm-hmm. some time kind of walking through that, checking out some of the cars. Um, uh, and really seeing what catches our eyes. And uh, I at least we stopped by the Toyota GR racing booth there. Mm-hmm. Um, I looked at a super that I really can't afford, but uh, need to have anyways, but, but need to have anyway, which, yeah, which, I, which I think exemplifies this show, because yeah. you can <laughs> kind of walking around here looking at all these great items that I can't afford, but probably need for some reason or another. And I just haven't figured that out yet. There's a Haas CNC five axis mill over there that, uh, yeah, would look great in my warehouse. Um, the problem is it's about three Corollas. Um, and yeah, no, I think I just need that sitting in my shop. If they would let me, I can sneak it out the back door, but I don't think they would let me. I think uh, you'd have a hard, I think security would, yeah. would talk to you for a few minutes. At put least. a funny hat on it. Maybe. Yeah, um, it was, you know, it was Halloween too. We were, we were yeah. walking through, uh, on Halloween as well, and that was fascinating because somehow he got me to Vegas on Halloween. I have no idea how that happened. You know, I don't even know either. And yeah. I, you know, they we know what they say about <laughs> Vegas. Obviously, you know what what happens here stays here. I suppose. Yeah, and um, don't drive here. Don't yeah. don't. That's drive just here. what I say here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I flew so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really really embodying my uh, credentials as an automotive talk show host. I flew here. Yeah. Um. You know the Aeromotive ADHD show. Obviously. Um. Yeah. Now before we get on to some of the other things here, before we talk about some of the guests coming up here later in the show. Oh, tell me about a little bit about what's going on, a little bit of an update with what you're doing. So my my listeners, longtime listeners know you from your YouTube channel. Yep. You've got over 200,000 subscribers. You do a lot of engineering projects on there. Uh, you're one of the only people I know who owns a Mark Forge Metal X2 metal 3D printer. Yeah. What's what's happening in your world? So uh, I don't have over 200,000 subscribers, but I like the enthusiasm. I really enjoy that. Well, so, well this is just anticipating the release. Exactly. It will be yep. 200,000 by the so time. So you're yeah. going to have to hold this for a little <laughs> bit until... Uh, <laughs> it, it's really high, though. You've got quite a few a few number of subscribers, though. Yeah. No, I, uh, it's, it's around 200,000. And um, yeah, so I'm still working on a race car that I need to finish that has a V12 that has a brand new set of individual, individual throttle bodies. Holy cow individual throttle bodies that I designed and built for it that got a kind of version two. So that's the main project right now. I have a 1961 Cadillac convertible that is currently not running or driving or really much of a car at this moment, but it, it's it's getting there. It sort of looks like a, a, a Cadillac at the moment. It's a start, and, yeah. Yeah, it's a start. And, um, yeah, that's, those are the two main projects right now. It's getting the race car finished up and getting the, um, uh, and getting the, um, Cadillac finished up to make that all work. But, uh, yeah. And yeah, I have a Metal X 3D printer and it prints things every single day. Some of which is my project, some of which is client projects and, um, some of the mic projects work sometimes they don't there we go <laughs> i you know i love it we're gonna we're gonna touch base on that and more and we're gonna talk to amir benta too coming up here on the automotive adhd show on am 1460 and fm 101.1 the answer at the speed council getting things done fast is our priority we do everything fast from driving <laughs> working sleeping and eating so He's choking! This is Tim. Hello. And by the time this ad is over, he'll have bicycled across the earth 69 times. Nice. Even if our name sounds unfamiliar, you know our work. F1? Pfft. Child's play. The world's first supersonic jet? Yep. That was us. Apollo 11? Also us. The fastest animal in the sea? Hell. We even wrote the Wikipedia article. Fast. And we're so dedicated to speed that we've genetically engineered the world's first hyperspeed speed machine. With this scientific breakthrough, you can interact with and download your favorite automotive podcast a whole day early. How's that for fast? 
Learn more at facebook.com slash automotive ADHD. This message approved by the Speed Council and the Church of Fast Things. The news and events that matter to you. AM 1460 and FM 101.1. The answer. My next guest had a hand in making those car sounds on Pike's <laughs> Peak, and uh, his name is Amir Bentatu, and listeners of my show may recognize him. He's a race engineer, time attack driver, devoted Honda fanatic, and co-host of Motor Trend's new show, Super Speed Garage, uh, Super Street Garage, rather. <laughs> there we go. Uh, Amir Bentatu, welcome back to Automotive ADHD. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Really glad to have you here and uh, really glad you made it out here. And aside from launching Super Street, um, what have you been up to since I last talked to you at Pikes Peak? Oh, man, lots of race engineering and uh, lots of filming for Super Street Garage. Okay. And unfortunately, not much more than that. I've been on probably 60 flights this year. Wow. And finally on my off season. So <laughs> there you go. Yesterday was my last day of SEMA. And unfortunately, I couldn't make the time frame that uh uh, I tried to make with you guys, so I stayed an extra day just so I could be here with you. That is amazing. We really appreciate you doing that. I, I can't give you enough keychains to make that worth the extra time, <laughs> but thank you for doing that. No, the pleasure's all mine, man. I love what you do. Oh, thank you. And I really love what you're doing with Super Street Garage as well. I think there's some really cool stuff going on here. And uh, so, you know, and it's one of those things. So tell me a little bit. So my listeners have probably seen the show. They've probably seen it. But uh -huh. if they haven't, uh, tell me a little bit about the history real quick of Super Street. It started as a magazine and yeah. now it's a TV show. Exactly. So Super Street was one of the premier magazines for the import tuner scene. Mm -hmm. uh, John Nads Nadiri was one of the editors in chief from the very beginning and he is my co-host on the show and it is essentially the magazine that uh i guess embraces and embodies the import tuner scene and mm -hmm. uh it's such an honor to be a part of that and to be able to share you know like my tuning style and i guess you could say like what i can bring to the scene and represent super street because for me super street was a very uh like influential you know part of my life mm -hmm. in the sense of like for a lot of the guys that were part of this industry it was the biggest magazine and uh like really paved the way for a lot of what we do and then you know super street held the first time attack ever in north america wow which nads brought to the u.s really so, yeah wow so that's there Okay, so there's some really deep connection there <laughs> with the, the tuner scene and how yeah. that works. Now, how did you get in front of the camera there, too? Oh, man, it's funny. I just got an email, and they're like, would you consider being a host on a TV show? And for me, I'd never really aspired to be on TV mm -hmm. or uh, a personality or anything like that. And uh, But it was a cool opportunity, and they couldn't tell me what exactly it was. They were just like, it involves JDM cars. And uh, I had to go through a process and I bombed my first, what they call a chem test, which is where they have like multiple hosts together. Absolutely bombed it because I'd been up for like 40 hours, much like right now. He's, he's <laughs> running on no, he's been awake since nine o'clock yesterday, 9 a.m. <laughs> yes. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. He's really, I, I don't know if we've got like a Red Bull sponsorship here that can bring you some <laughs> drinks here, but oh man. Yeah. So I went to my first chem test. I hadn't slept. I didn't look at the script or anything. And Nads rewrites his script because like, oh, th these are more my words mm -hmm. and threw me completely off. And I think I, I'm normally not too bad on camera or in the sense of I don't get shy in front of it. And they ran the camera and I didn't say anything for 10 seconds to the point of like, okay, cut. Like, let's try this again. <laughs> did the same thing. And then finally they're like, all right, let's go. Like just kind of free form. And that's where I guess you can say I did a little bit better. And then Nads was amazing in pushing for me to be more of a part of the show. Or he wanted me to be a co-host and did a second chem test where it went much better and somehow, you know, uh, they decided I was the person to be there. <laughs> that's amazing. And that's really uh, cool. And so, yeah. I mean, it kind of took a little bit of like, hey, we got some JDM cars. You're like, okay, I'm interested, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> what, what's it been like filming the show? I know that's probably a crazy schedule. I, when yeah. I Whenever I've talked to anybody who's been on TV, I mean, like the production schedule is bonkers on that yeah. stuff. What's that like? So the production schedule is pretty gnarly. Essentially, we build a car in four days and do what we call a payoff, which is like whatever we do with the car on the fifth mm -hmm. day. 
So it's a five day production schedule, although we've typically gone six to seven on most because we really push hard to make the show very unique. And uh, our payoffs are much more involved than most shows. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a lot of the typical Motor Trend shows, it's like you finish a car and you take it to a burger joint across the street kind of situation. For us, right. we've done things like the Nisei Parade, which is the Japanese festival in Los Angeles. And our car was in that. We take our cars to the track and we've uh, aimed at doing a sub two minute at Button Willow, like so many different things that we've done. I mean, we went to Mazda's R and DHQ. Like it's been an incredible experience. Wow. And yeah. when you're building these cars in like four days, right? Uh -huh. Like, are you actually building them in four days? Like that's, that's the schedule on there for the most part. Yes. Cause uh, you always see like TV shows where it's like, yeah, we got two days to wrap up the car <laughs> when it was like two weeks of filming. But <laughs> if you're hammering that schedule, that's nuts. Yeah. And so like, for example, uh, the Lotus, mm -hmm. we for, on the season finale, which the, think, the Lotus is your personal car too. Correct. Which is awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, and it comes back for a second episode, which mm -hmm. is the season finale, which our second half of the season airs November tenth. Okay. And Christian, who is my lead mechanic and crew chief on my NSX program, and he works with me in professional racing. Him, Riley Stair, who's my fabricator that did all the work on the NSX. We basically pulled eight all-nighters in nine days to finish the car. So to hold to that production schedule, yeah, uh, we pushed very hard. Wow, uh, that is incredible. And uh, so the, uh, the sleepless nights aren't aren't like rare to you. You're kind of used to them, you it, know. <laughs> I, it upsets me, or like it's sad how many of them I've done this year. <laughs> you know, kind of things. Like, <laughs> I've been on sixty flights, probably done forty all-nighters. Wow. And uh, but I get to talk to amazing people like you. And it makes it likewise, all worth it. likewise. <laughs> uh, now I have a loaded question for you because okay. I'm, I'm going to ask you what your favorite car is out of the Super Street projects, and the Lotus obviously <laughs> is your own car, yeah. so it's kind of a loaded question. But well, is there been any car you guys have done that's really kind of stood out, or you really enjoyed part of that project, especially? Has there been anything like that? So excluding the Lotus, just because that's obviously you know right a given. Yeah, uh, Nad's got to build his Dream EK. Okay, and he's given so much to the scene and done an incredible amount for people like you and I that love this. Mm -hmm. If you like Japanese cars in the, you know, and modifying them in some, you know, fashion, you essentially have been influenced by what Naz has done to this industry mm -hmm. in one way, shape or form, whether you know it or not. Wow. And seeing him finally get to build his dream car, which he's never gotten the opportunity to, uh, and seeing him learn to wrench. Like when we started the series, he literally had never really done anything on a car ever. And it's a build show, so he has to work on cars. Right. But the EK is one that myself and Christian and Naz put a ton of work into. And seeing how emotional he got over it and how happy he was, uh, we become like family. Like last night I was out with Naz. And tonight I'll probably be out with Nads. And uh, you're gonna take a nap first, right? I, yeah, you're, I'm going. You have to straight to the room after you have this. Have to straight to the room. <laughs> <laughs> it's those kind of bonds and those kind of connections I think that really keep bringing us back to cars, you know, yeah. and and the the culture around it. Like being here at SEMA, uh -huh. I mean, there's what 150,000 people walking yeah. through these halls who all have some spark, some passion yeah. for cars. And and I, I want to kind of ask you as well, like. Uh -huh. Do you think what you're doing, you know, I think this, like with, with Super Street Garage, like presenting the tuner culture, uh, especially to people who maybe who haven't seen it, right? You yeah. a lot of times think of the motor trend stuff as being a lot of hot rods, drag cars. Absolutely. Right? And yeah. my question is like, how do we keep the, how, how do we keep that spark alive with the tuner cars for the next generation? Because like the old tuner cars uh, are, you know, the your, your EKs, your... You know, A86s, your your Supras, your things like uh, that are like this generation 65 Mustang, right? <laughs> that That's exactly what it is. So a lot of the guys that when I was in high school have now kind of, they've either become professionals or their own businesses and they're buying those cars and modifying them. And it's kind of like how the hot rods went a little bit crazy about 15 years ago, mm -hmm. yep. where those guys, that generation prior to us, those were the cars that they loved, you know, uh, and Super Street Garage is like part of the goal is to help Motor Trend kind of get into the next era mm -hmm. and to sh bring back some of that, uh, I guess you could say the quality in tuning cars. Like uh, it's become very much quantity over quality Yeah, for a lot of the younger generation. And for Nads and I, if we can kind of help reverse that and share 
the opposite. That's what we want to do. And a lot of the parts we use are authentic, the highest quality we can possibly have. And we want to share our vision of what the import scene is to whoever's willing to watch. Absolutely. And yeah. I think... I think that's so important because, you know, I think in one way or another, any car guy you talk to now, be it you, be yeah. it me, we had yeah. that we had that seed of inspiration. We saw something really cool. Yeah. You know, a lot of the generation now saw that in, say, Fast and Furious yeah, exactly. um, or the or Initial D, yeah. for instance. I, I love Initial heavily, D. I mean, my driving career is probably thanks to Initial D. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think about the new movie that's coming out? Uh, I'm excited to see it because the first live action movie wasn't very good. Right. And also, I don't know if you've watched MF Ghost. I haven't caught up on it. I have not caught up you on would, it. You would, if you're an Initial D fan, you will love MF Ghost. Okay. It is incredible already. I'm so excited. Like, every time there's an episode, like, I feel like such a nerd because <laughs> uh, being a 37-year-old race engineer, driver, everything I do, I'm like, every Sunday, I'm like, oh, sweet. The next episode of MF Ghost, the anime is out. I'm like, that's what I have to do today. <laughs> I'm going to go watch cartoons about racing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. And, uh, so with that, what was, what was that kind of seed for that, that passion that you have that, I mean, you've taken that to the, to the moon with the car <laughs> stuff. You really have, you're doing so much amazing work. Thank you so much. What was it that really got you into, into cars like that? So it was JDM option and like uh, best mm -hmm. motoring and hot version. Yes. I so, love hot version. Same, man. Like, I would watch the Time Attack cars, mm -hmm. and it would be like the Cyber Evo or the June Hyper Lemon, and like all these crazy cars that, like, now would be very mild in comparison. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, watching that really inspired me to, I guess, that, that inspired my build style, you could say. And a lot of my cars have a very Time Attack styled uh, way of building in the mm -hmm. sense of, like, I've known for building time attack cars. Most of my clients have me build time attack cars and watching hot version is literally the thing that started my path. Wow. And you know, nowadays that's one of those things too, that you can, you can go on YouTube and like binge all of it. You yeah. don't have to buy the cassette exactly. tapes, yeah. right? You can, you can go check it all out. And, and, and that's really cool. Like kind of seeing where you started with that oh. and you've turned that into a career, which is so incredible. And, and I want to talk a little bit here. Oh. Uh, we're coming up on a break in a bit, but I want to talk a little bit about what, you know, you do with RS Future, what you do yeah. with your company as well. So let's get to that in the other side of the break. My guest is Amir Benta to Motor Trend TV host, race engineer, awesome Honda car guy. He is a great guy. We're going to get back to him here in just a minute. You're listening to Automotive ADHD on AM 1460 and FM 101.1, The Answer. Ladies and gentlemen, the Speed Council proudly presents Automotive ADHD, now on video. For better or for worse, subscribe to Automotive ADHD, now playing on YouTube and Rumble. Colorado Springs number one car show by default. <laughs> this is Automotive ADHD. All right, there you go. Those car sounds are sent into the show every single week by listeners like you. And maybe this guy. I gotta get I gotta get some car sounds. I'll send of, you some good ones. Yeah, I'm sure you got plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> if you're just joining us, I am sitting here with uh, with Amir Bentatu from RS Future. He is also a TV show host on Motor Trend and a uh, devout Honda guy. Is <laughs> yes, that I is am. that a fair intro there? That that is as fair as it gets. <laughs> Almost uh too much. <laughs> too much? Can you have, I'm just a car nerd. <laughs> can you have too much Honda though? Never. Never. You heard it here first, by the way. You Never. heard it here first. <laughs> now, Amir's got some really exciting projects going on. In addition to being a professional race engineer, yeah. you you do racing yourself. You're not just yep. sitting there doing R&D for guys. You're on the track, so I think you have a really cool idea of working both sides of that. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about your company, RS Future, and what you do. Yeah, so RS Future is uh, my business. We make aerodynamic components, wings, splitters, uh, various accessories uh, that are all out of carbon fiber. It's uh, all ISO 9001 aerospace grade you know, components. And it's essentially the stuff that I put on my car mm -hmm. that people saw and they're like, can you make me one? And eventually turn it into a business. 
And then we also build, uh, we have an, a branch of the business called RS Future Special Projects where we build uh, high level race cars. It, we're not like most shops in the sense of, you know, you won't bring your car to us to do brakes or install coilovers. It's typically a ground up build. Okay. Like we're working on a couple of very, uh, very fast time attack cars that are going to be built and uh, they're like essentially year long projects. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And are we talking like full chassis up, like build the chassis and yeah. everything on that? Completely stripped to finished race car. Wow. That is incredible. What sort of work uh, does that take? Like, you know, that expertise, like how do you have a lot of people who are, you know, working with you to build that? Or is it kind of a small team? It's me and one guy. Do you, well, it's a, really, it's a, it's a small team there. Yeah, yeah, it's very small. And uh, the, a lot of the people that bring their car to me, they bring it because they want essentially me to work on it. Okay. And uh, the guys that work on the car are part of my race team as well. So it's a very small, uh, it, our shop is large. We have a lot of cars. But the team that builds the cars is a very small. Wow. So it'll be like me and one primary mechanic. And then if we have, uh, let's say, something specialized, we need to do wiring, and I'm not going to do it myself, uh, I'll give it to like Rye Wire, who I just saw on my way, you know, to see you. <laughs> uh, and like cage work and chassis work, all fabrication goes to Riley Stair from RS Motorsport. So we essentially facilitate the build in the sense of we'll do a lot of the, uh, a lot of the build, but anything that's specialized. Okay. We work very closely with guys like Riley and Ryan. Okay. Wow, that is cool. And so when you're building these cars, you're you're pulling from your knowledge base, your background, your experience as well as a driver. I think you probably, I, I don't know what your competition is like, but I think a lot of guys who build cars don't drive cars too. Yeah, I would say like I have a very unique set of skills in the sense of I can drive uh, and we've won a multiple championships we won three global time attack street class championships in a row wow. and uh i also can build cars and i'm also a professional race engineer so i kind of am a jack of all trades i wouldn't say i'm the best or incredible at either of those mm -hmm. but uh have a well well-rounded skill set fantastic and and now let's talk a little bit too about your car, well, one of your cars, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the the uh, the Time Attack NSX. So it's you you don't have the stock engine in it. Not much of the car is really stock. Give me a little <laughs> bit of a rundown on that car. So it's an unlimited class Time Attack car that uh, we converted from street class to unlimited over the last year. Okay. It weighs right around two thousand pounds. Uh, with the last turbo made seven hundred and thirty at the wheels. We have a new turbo that should make right around nine hundred. Um, it's essentially as far as you can push a global time attack unlimited class car uh per their rule set okay so like we cut off the rear of the car made a tube structure to support the wing and everything else the car runs like a 355 rear tire 295 front uh carbon i mean essentially the only part on the car that isn't composite is the roof okay and uh it's actually here at sema we just debuted a new livery and then we were giving away couple hundred banners yesterday with Max Boost, uh, wow. and Dennis Kako, who's the designer of, uh, or the, the artist for Max Boost and Auto Cannon. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty intense car. Lots of Japanese parts that are very authentic. It's a Midnight Purple 2, which is an R34 GTR color. I'm very particular about the aesthetics of my car. So <laughs> it, it looks as fast as it goes. That is awesome, and yeah. that's a uh, you're running. So you have a K series engine in that too. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so now what? And, and a lot of people are like a K and an NSX. Yeah. Whoa! Blast what happened to the C series? <laughs> right? What, yeah. what 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 was the idea behind that? So when we decided to build the car, I looked at all of the options. The first, obviously, being to build the C series. The second to be to J swap it, which is the other V6 that Acura makes or Honda makes. That's a lot more affordable. And then the third was to put in a K series. So I looked at everything as in uh, what is the cost of the base engine, mm -hmm. what is the availability, and what is the tunability. Okay. As in, like, what does the aftermarket have? Right. And the K-Series is essentially unrivaled in the import market. It's like, of the engines in the import scene, it would be like 2Js, K-Series, B-Series, uh, even like, I mean, I would even call the RB26 a great engine. It's kind of a piece of crap, but... I sorry, know several sorry, guys, sorry, guys who have those engines, and I think they would actually agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. they would. You can make them excellent. It just takes like $100,000. So uh, the K is essentially for like $6,000, we can build an engine that'll hold the power we're holding for a full season. And it also saves a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And parts are very 
uh, readily available. So I can go on to turn 14, order every part I need, rods, pistons, send it to the machine shop, and in a month I have an engine. Yeah. Whereas like for a C series, if I were to blow mine, I essentially couldn't find another one for probably six months. Right. Right, and that that was uh, for me. Just speaking personally, I, I race in some of just the local uh, uh, kind of competitive scene down in Colorado. I I do autocross. I've done some of the local time attack and stuff, and that's been an issue for me with my Honda S two thousand. Is uh, I've been through that F series three times, oh, I'm and so sorry. <laughs> and it's never easy finding parts for one, and even small uh. stuff, right? Like if you need an alternator, uh. I, I can't go to like AutoZone and get a you know, an alternator for it. Yeah. But if it's a K series, I can. So, uh, I mean, literally exactly that. When we were at Road Atlanta last year, or no, two years ago, our alternator failed and went to the auto zone that was three miles from the track, uh, bought one and put it back in the car. Yeah. You know, like, so it's You like, just can't beat that, that parts interchange. It, it's a four cylinder LS is what it really is. Yeah. So it's, uh, I get this question a lot in the sense of like, what engine would you choose? If you want to make over a thousand horsepower, Probably like an LS might be a better option. Under a thousand horsepower, the K is essentially the best option you can have. Okay, yeah. fantastic. And the K series, you know what? It's a four cylinder, but makes a great noise when you rev it all the way out. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we run a three twenty one stainless manifold, so it's very thin okay. into a titanium exhaust and dump pipe, and it sounds like a super GT GT five hundred car. So uh, Riley did an amazing job with the exhaust. So I uh, I was actually nervous. The one thing I was kind of scared about was if I changed to the four cylinder, I was going to hate the sound of the engine. Mm -hmm. And I actually like it more than the six. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That gives, if you were questioning the K-swap idea, that might yeah. give you some inspiration there. Now we got just a little bit of time K left. K is the way. K is the way. Um, what, what's, a, what's a dream build for you? So uh, the current NSX is actually what we call the mule. It's the one that we're testing with. Okay. And we have a second NSX chassis that we're going to be building into the like full on unlimited, it'll fit into the international unlimited class in global time attack and mm -hmm. it'll fit into the rules for world time attack. And it is essentially gonna be like a stress member rear. So if you don't know what that means, it's essentially the engine and the transmission are what the structure of the rear of the car. So like at the B pillar, the engine and trans will be connected to the roll cage and everything connects to the engine and transmission. The okay. front will be completely tube frame. So, uh, it will be like a prototype car, like an LMP2 car. Yeah. In an NSX form with an NSX tub. And we're taking everything we know from this car and we're testing things like, can we push this engine to 1100 horsepower? Wow. And if it doesn't, we'll put a VR38 in it. That's the plan. Okay. So you're going for that, that really structurally sound, really yeah. stiff, tie it all together. That's kind of something you see with like, you know, uh, like real like competition race cars, you yeah. know, like purpose built ground up chassis, everything's tied together. Exactly. Like Formula One, Formula Two, uh, s most Super GT cars, DTM mm -hmm. are all stress member cars where it's like they're proper race cars to save weight or they, they're proper race cars and they do stress member to save weight. Mm -hmm. And so taking the lessons from that and applying it to our car. That is amazing. So yeah. a, a, a car guy like you, that that's the dream car. Yeah. Like a lot of people are like, well, I want a Ferrari or no, no, it's, oh. it, this is, this is next level. No. <laughs> this is next level right here. I, I'm lucky in the sense I get to drive a lot of Ferraris with my clients that I do coaching for. Yep. And at the end of the day, I drive an E46 M3 on the street and that is plenty for me on the street. And all I want is to build fast NSXs. <laughs> <laughs> that is an amazing dream. And I, I think you're really going a long way to accomplish that. I think you're being an inspiration to guys like me as well. And people who are listening to this and hearing about what you're doing. I mean, we, when it comes to like the tuner, you know, dream job, you're yeah. kind of living that right now. Oh man, it's such an honor to hear that. And I'm very fortunate for the career that I've kind of fallen into, mm -hmm. you know, it's just been, I was too stupid to stop and kept going after it for years <laughs> and, uh, it all kind of fell into place. Absolutely. That's a very humble way to put it. It's very <laughs> cool what you're doing and, uh, it. and, and you've done all of that. And, and now you can also check off, you've been on the automotive ADHD show twice now, which is the most fun podcast I've been on, uh, I've done quite a few of them, and this was the one that I looked forward to. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. My uh -huh. guest is Amir Bentatu. You can follow him at, follow him at 
RS Future underscore Amir. Really check out what he's doing because it is mind blowing. Of course, you can watch him too on Super Street <laughs> Super. That's the second time I did that. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta talk. I know I talk for a living. Super Street Garage on Motor Trend, and he's doing some amazing stuff. In addition to coming on my humble radio show and podcast, Amir, thank you so much for coming out here to SEMA to join yeah. me here on the show. The pleasure was all mine, man. Thank you so much for having me on again. I hope to be on in the future. So grateful to Amir for coming out and being on my show. I really appreciate that. And I want to thank you for joining me here on this really special edition of uh, Automotive ADHD. Now, don't go anywhere. Coming up here after the break, we're touching base again with Wesley Kagan. Wrapping up some thoughts from the SEMA show. We are doing the show here at a uh, great time here in Las Vegas, hanging out on the Vegas Strip, looking at some cool cars. I will see you on the other side of the break right here on AM 1460 and FM 101.1, The Answer. Every day, thousands go without the ability to buy necessary and life-saving parts. Parts like turbos, coilovers, and wheels. I'm Steve, turbocharged BRZ. It doesn't run because I can play with my connecting rod through the hole in my block. Project cars sit unfinished, waiting for parts, collecting dust. My name is Todd, and I bought a rotary. It's okay, bro, we'll uh, swap it. But no more. You, yes you, can make a difference. More information is available on the Automotive ADHD Facebook page. Facebook.com slash Automotive ADHD. This is The Answer. Online at am1460theanswer.com. Those car sounds, courtesy of Patrick and his Suzuki Carry. Emphasis on K. Carry. It's a K car. Thank you, Patrick, for sending those car sounds into the show. And remember, this month's car sound giveaway is sponsored by Pelsey, P E L S E E, makers of the P12 Pro dash cam. Now, the P12 keeps your windshield. Uncluttered with suction cups and accessories because it effectively replaces your rear view mirror, which is something I think is really important. Uh, in addition to that, it doubles as an extended 12 inch mirror. The mirror seamlessly switches to a full color touchscreen LCD uh, when you want it to be. And when you don't, it's it's a mirror and uh, it also has a backup camera that doubles as your rear facing dash cam. So it really has a lot of features. It supports 4K and 1080p recording, solves a lot of design issues that I personally have with uh, with dash cam. So best part is you have a chance to win one by sending your car sounds into the show, just like Patrick did, facebook.com slash automotive ADHD, or you can email me, Matt, at throttlewarrior.com. I'm taking submissions all the way through November 24th. That is the date you have to send those car sounds in and the great thing is you get to hear them here on the show and I get to subject my guests to them as well. Just like my guest joining me in this segment, you heard him at the top of the show, Wesley Kagan, YouTuber, engineering, entrepreneur, entrepreneur, I will say. That, sure. That sounds pretty take, good. Will you take yeah. that? I'm kind of um, changing your job title every time I have you on. So that's, I do that exact same thing. Um, I'm also known for stealthily taking off my SEMA badge while you're doing an ad read. Um, it, 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 I'm sure it looked great on camera. Um, How you got that off with the headphones, too? That was it's pretty, skillful. It's skillful. pretty impressive. It's worth going to your YouTube channel and checking out that video and probably hitting that subscribe button as well. You can so, tell this man's a YouTuber, by uh, the way. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell. Yep. It, exactly. Nearing 200,000 subscribers. There we go. We, we, the, nearing. Nearing. Plus nearing. or minus. Yeah. Plus or minus a few. So uh, I'll take it from him. Um, and, uh, now speaking of that SEMA badge, of course you had the, um, yours had the SEMA member tag on it like mine, but you mm -hmm. got a gold stripe on yours. I got a gold stripe. I do not know what the gold stripe means, but I, it obviously means I'm more important than everybody else. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what that That's means. That's exactly what it means. So we we've been walking around SEMA. We've spent uh we we spent a great deal of time walking around SEMA. Yep. Uh we saw lots of different things. We talked to some great uh, interesting people. Uh we talked to uh, Eric from uh Banks Power. Yep. So uh, that's great. I 
look forward to inviting him on the show as well in the future. And uh, he's a fan yeah. of yours. Yeah, he actually pulled me out of the crowd, which was um, it's always uh, I mean, it's really great that I'm. I exist in a realm that I can do dumb things on the internet and get paid for it. Uh, but I am still very unprepared for people um, being like, hey, I know you. And I'm like, ah, okay. <laughs> well, you <laughs> see, at least for me in radio, that doesn't happen, right? Sure, yeah, they, don't, they, don't, they don't get to see you. <laughs> Until um, that voice comes out and then everybody's yeah. like, hey, I've, I've heard you on the radio. Yeah, it's that um, dude who won't shut up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but we, we, we've been going around and checking out lots of different vendor booths. I, was there anything that that caught your eye in now that we've actually been around and had some time to go through the show. Well, you know, it's, it is funny because I am definitely getting my steps in this week. I've, uh, yeah, t- uh, 20,000 steps in just yesterday, although I did walk around in a lot of corners. So, um, ultimately, yeah, I mean, I think one of the big takeaways from this, and I think I talked about this a little bit at the top of the show is how many vendors are here and how, uh, the builds that are here, mm-hmm. how absolutely flawless some of them are. Like, there is some time and some effort put into... Uh, I'm uh, Gucci Motors over there on the Toyo Tires tent. Um, just the amount of time, the amount of care, and the amount of effort that goes into doing those builds is phenomenal. I can't, I can't speak highly enough of some of these projects. So... Uh, you know, that's what I really like to see, because uh, I think a lot of the media surrounding SEMA sometimes is that, oh, look at these drive shafts that aren't connected. Oh, look at these welds over here and right. look at stuff like that. And there is truly some very, very quality pieces that come out of this show. And it's very impressive to look at. It, it is. And one of those that I thought, speaking of Eric with Banks Power, yep. um, the, the truck that they built yep. with the supercharged diesel in In it it is incredibly well done that's one of those builds that he even said yeah we just got plates for it yeah and we're gonna drive it around like it's a running and driving build and they put when you look at the way it's built you can tell the passion that went into it this wasn't really a work of art it really really is yeah it it is and the the engineering that went into it as well and that's kind of where your expertise kind of plays into that is that engineering side of it well in talking with him like the amount of hours that goes into and i think that a, a lot of people don't see the design side of it when you actually go through and put it all together in solid works and the effort that goes into dealing with large assemblies and uh just putting all of this stuff together oh, yeah. in the design stage, let alone on the manufacturing side is um, like th- whether, whether engineering is an art form or not, like it, it, it takes so much um, to make all of this come together on a project management side, on a design side, on an actual, does it work? And the amount of prototypes that go into actually putting all this together, it's wildly impressive. And that's a great example of a project that just looks flawless. Absolutely. It really does. And uh, there are several other projects very similar to that, too. Now, yep. we also spent some time walking through the Apex show, which is kind of happening in tandem with the SEMA show. And it's on it's on the badge yeah, as well. It, I'm 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 unclear on how they're connected. I probably could have looked that up before I talked live on the air about it. But uh, the, the fact is, they are connected. And what was interesting when we went through there is seeing the industry, a lot of the suppliers, the back yeah. end of the stuff that you see, like when you go to AutoZone, when you go to O'Reilly's Auto Parts and you yeah. buy, um, you know, XYZ part off the shelf, you know, like a hub or something like that. There are manufacturers who make those and supply those, and they were all there. Yeah. Like I said, um, if you ever want to um, complain about an injector or like a belt broke prematurely or something like that, you can go to the vendor that probably supplied that part that is sitting in a tent there and yell at them about that, which I'm not encouraging uh, you to do. Sometimes that happens, but <laughs> the port I, sales I rep there. Yeah. It's not the engineer. <laughs> I think that's the dividing line there. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it, it is um, it was eye opening to me to see on the distribution side, on the actual manufacturing side and not to say it was completely imported. Um, there were Amer- uh, American manufacturers there. Um, Pro Real, the host real company is there and a prominent tent. And there's also uh, Bosch fuel. Yeah, we saw Bosch there. Yeah. And, um, interstate batteries and like uh, companies that it's not just all import stuff and i actually have no idea if either of those companies i know bosch is an import company but um, yeah anyways like it's good to see that there is there it's good to see that there's plenty of um stuff there and and it's interesting to see that side of it i guess ultimately 
Well, it is because it says it's a side of it that as, as consumers, at least we don't get to see. And I don't know. think about it that much, although I think I will uh, moving forward that um, there is there is manufacturing there and all of the little components that you buy on Amazon, all of the little components that you buy on eBay. Um, there, there's an entire series of distribu- distribution that happens there that's kind of interesting to see. It's kind of like the, uh, uh, the, the amount of thought that goes into making a lamp, for example, mm-hmm. like the, the literal team of engineers and the hundreds of people that go into designing a lamp that we, you and I don't really think about. We just flip the switch and turn on the lamp. Like there's that entire side of the hundreds of people that get your cheap Amazon replacement tail light from overseas to here. You know? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, there's so much that goes into it and we get to see that side of it here. And I imagine, you know, we were we were kind of joking, right? If you're like a a traveling like sales guy or a distributor, you know, you could go buy one hundred and fifty thousand little panel clips from a seller down there and and then resell them on Amazon. And that that is what people do. A lot of people walking the halls are probably doing exactly that. Drop shipping is 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 a thing that exists without a doubt. So, um, yeah, no, it's a. I would encourage anybody who's here at SEMA to go over and uh, kind of get a boots on the ground over there as well. Yeah, because it is interesting. Absolutely. And if you can't make it out here to SEMA, there's always next year, but there's always this show. We are wrapping up this show today, but I'm going to be giving you some more coverage of it in the coming shows in the coming weeks. I've got a lot more stuff to share with you, so you don't want to miss a minute of this show. Lots of great ways to catch it. YouTube, Rumble, on the radio, am1460theanswer.com. I will see you right here next week. If you're talking about it, we're talking about it. AM 1460 and FM 101.1. The answer.